There are several ways to control the color of the objects inside the octane scatter. First, let's add a plane, make it uh, 1000 by 1000 centimeters. Then, let's add the light, for example, octane daylight, and turn it around so we can see what we're doing a bit better. Then, add the octane scatter and put a cube into it. Let's make our cube a thin cube by changing its size to 5 by 5. Then, in the octane scatter, let's set the distribution to surface and put our plane into the surface. We can change our particle count to 5000 to get a bit more visible result. Okay, now let's add a material and see what we can do with them. We're grabbing a simple diffuse material and let's add some interesting colors to it. Here's how we're getting one color. Now, if we want to have multiple colors inside our octane scatter, we can duplicate our materials as well as our object and assign different materials to our object inside the scatter. We can change the distribution of colors as well by adding more and more objects of the same material, like so. Another method to add some color variation to our scatter is to use a random color node. To do this, let's assign our material to Octane Scatter itself. And in the node editor, let's use a random color node in our diffuse channel. A random color node gives us a black and white gradient, but we can always remap these values by using Octane Gradient node. So let's select some bright colors to see what we're doing here, like so. As you can see, this method also gives us a random distribution of colors without any real way to control the distribution. Sure, we can change the colors, but the distribution can only be changed by changing the seed in the octane scatter. But there is another way with which we can control the color of the octane scatter object with maximum precision. To do this, Let's add an instance color node in our material editor, set its source to particle, and in the color source, let's put our octane scatter. Leave the color mode to display color and add a plane effector. Don't forget to assign it to the effector stop of octane scatter. And as we can see, it works by changing the position of our cubes. But we don't want that for now. Let's set our color mode instead to effector color. And after that, we can add a falloff field. We can use any field here. Let's start with something simple, like a linear field. And as you can see, we can now change the color of our cubes by simply modifying the linear field. The colors are black and white now, but we know how to deal with that simply by using octane gradient with uh, some bright and interesting colors, we can get our gradients the way we want them to look. So the beauty of this method is that we can modify our fields any way we want. We can combine them, we can animate them, and we get the full control over our colors. Let's do something a bit more interesting. Let's add a shader field instead. And in the shader field, we'll add a noise. And now we get a kind of random distribution of colors, but we still retain our full control of it. By changing the noise parameters, we can get the exact look we want. And that's awesome. Now, Let's see how we can use this method to create a cartoon cubic landscape. Let's set up our shader field again. Add a noise. And in the noise type, let's select electric. Change the global scale to 500. And play with the contrast a bit. After that, go to Octane Gradient node. And Let's set our landscape colors. 
We'll take dark blue for deep water, blue for shallow water, yellow for sand, bright green for foliage, something like dark green for trees, and let's add a bit of brown for rocks or mountains. And we'll leave our white snow caps. Alright, looks good. Now we can go back to plane effector and turn on transform position. Now let's change the count of particles and let's see what we're getting here. We're getting a lot of mountains here, so let's go back to our noise and make it a bit darker. And just like that, we're getting our environment. With some camera work and post production, this will look exactly like on the thumbnail. Thanks for watching this tutorial. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.